So, uh, Stephen A. Smith basically just called Mike Trout a liar on national TV. We'll talk about that in just a second. TA7, Tim Anderson has finally found himself a brand new home, and he got paid a whole lot less than what I was expecting. The Dodgers put on a show in the very first game of spring training, and of course, we have another controversy surrounding the see-through pants teams are running out of them. All of that and more in today's MLB recap. And just a reminder, we post these almost every single day. So if you want to stay up to date on the game of baseball, stick around, hit that subscribe button. We are so close to 500,000 subs. Let's see if we can gain a thousand today. That would be crazy. Thanks for the support. So over the last few weeks, we've talked about how terrible the brand new jerseys are. And then the conversation shifted to the see-through pants and players were not happy about that. A new controversy surrounding the pants is happening. Teams are now running out of pants. There is a pants shortage. I never thought I would say that out loud ever. But teams like the Cincinnati Reds are quite literally running out of the brand new 2024 pants. So they're having to use older pants that were made by Majestic. And if you guys don't remember, 2024 is the first year that every single piece of the uniform is 100% being manufactured by Fanatics. Nike is simply loaning their logo. So I know a lot of people are blaming Nike and rightfully so, but a lot of this is on the supplier Mr. Fanatics. Now, before we talk about Stephen A. Smith calling out Mike Trout as well as where Tim Anderson is going, this is an awful update for all of my Mets fans watching. Kodai Senga has a moderate right posterior capsule strain in his shoulder, which is not a good thing to have because I believe that's the same injury that Corey Kluber had. I think that's the same injury that Johan Santana had, and they were never the same guys afterwards. So I'm just praying to the baseball gods that they spare Kodai Senga's shoulder. This comes a few days after it was reported that Kyle Bradish was going to be starting the season on on the aisle with a sprained UCL. You know who's smiling from ear to ear right now, which is so sad to say? Scott Boris. If you guys don't remember, Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery are both clients of Scott Boris. And what I think is happening is Scott Boris is telling these guys, hey, we're going to go ahead and sit on the sidelines. We're going to wait for injuries to pile up. And then we're going to pounce for a team that's desperate. An Orioles team, if they lose Kyle Bradish, that is now desperation mode. And they're going to have to try and pull the trigger on a Blake Snell or a Jordan Montgomery or maybe even a trade. I don't envision the Mets selling out for Blake Snell because that's going to cost an arm and a leg. But Jordan Montgomery, could he be? A fit with the Mets. It's going to cost a lot. Maybe it could work out, but I don't see either of them going to the Mets. But the Orioles, again, the injury concern, that is a real thing. And Scott Boris, he's going to do Scott Boris things. So yesterday was the very first game of spring training. Baseball is officially back, and the Dodgers scored 14. The Padres one. We saw Te Oscar Hernandez driving an RBI in his very first at bat. A few moments later, a guy by the name of Kevin Paldo hit the very first home run of spring, and that made it eight to nothing. The funniest part about this eight run first inning was the fact that Fernando Tatis Jr. was mic'd up for the entire thing. Usually, the obligation for a player is they sign up for one single inning and then they give it to someone else, but I don't think Fernando Tatis or anyone else was expecting a 45 minute first inning. Now, even though the Padres got smacked around, it's spring training. We don't really care about the score, but one thing I do want to show is Jake Cronenworth hitting a home run. Again, I want to emphasize this is spring, but a few seasons ago, Jake Cronenworth had a 122 OPS plus in 2021, a 109 OPS plus in 2022. That dipped all the way to a 92 OPS plus in 2023. So the only reason why I'm showing this is can Jake Cronenworth bounce back? Let me know in the comments. Also, before we talk about some other Padres highlights, this was Giancarlo Stanton this morning. So if we're posing the question, can Cronenworth bounce back? What about Stanton? He's looking a whole lot lighter. Maybe he's going to play some outfield and be more agile. I have no idea, but can Cronenworth and Stanton bounce back? Let me know. Two other players I want to talk about real quick from that Padres and Dodgers game, Jackson Merrill. He is usually a shortstop, but now it's going to be Haseon Kim's job to lose. So Jackson, the fact that he's been a top 30 prospect in baseball for two consecutive seasons, it seems like he could make a huge push to be the everyday left fielder for the Padres. And last year, he had 25 doubles, 15 home runs, and 15 stolen bases in the minors. He's only 20 years old. He's really good. And then the other guy I want to talk about, Yuki Matsui, who is probably going to be the Padres' new closer, replacing Josh Hader. He came on over from the Nippon Professional Baseball League out in Japan. He looked disgusting. He struck out the side. So real quick, before we talk about where Tim Anderson is going, a huge update coming out of the Pirates camp. They have given Mitch Keller a five-year extension worth $77 million. And if you guys have no idea who Mitch Keller is, he is one of the hardest-throwing starting pitchers in baseball. But the crazy part is, his straight fastball is way better than his sinker. I thought a sinker was is going to be a whole lot better. No, it kind of stinks, honestly. Also, last year, Mitch Keller developed a new pitch, the cutter, and opposing hitters hit 320 against that pitch. So if he just ditches the cutter, throws the four-seam fastball more often, and that sweeper a whole lot more, I genuinely believe that with his stuff, Mitch Keller can be a top 
15 pitcher in the NL by the end of this year, but maybe that's a lofty prediction. Here we go. The Marlins have a brand new shortstop and they only had to give Tim Anderson five million dollars and to me that's pretty crazy because we're talking about a guy that was top seven in mvp in the shortened season from 2021 to 2022 he made consecutive all-star teams and back in 2019 he won a batting title so sticking with 2019 fast forwarding to 2022 over those three and a half seasons because again the 2020 season was a basically half season tim anderson combined for a 318 batting average and a 122 ops plus over 374 games that's really really good but unfortunately in 2023 he hit 245 with a paltry and mind-bending 60 ops plus 60 six zero we've posed the question can jake cronenworth bounce back what about john carlos stanton what about this guy right here can ta7 bounce back or is he simply just Tim Anderson now. The Tigers are picking up a brand new third baseman slash utility player in Gio Urshela, and I cannot believe that he only got one and a half million dollars. This is a straight up steal. Gio Urshela was Himothy for the Yankees a few years ago from 2019 to 2020 in 175 games. He belted 27 home runs, 45 doubles and combined for a 310 batting average with the 135 OPS plus. I forgot just how good he was over that stretch. Obviously, we know that he was traded for Josh Donaldson. He has a 120 OPS plus for the Twins. He goes to the Angels. He was decent with a 330 on base percentage while hitting 299, but the slugging, it fell from 429 with the Twins to 374. So hopefully we can get some pop back and Gio Rochelle is bad. So yeah, for $1.5 million going to the Tigers, that is an absolute W and the Tigers and the Royals, they're having amazing off seasons. You guys have been patient enough. Let's see what Stephen A. Smith had to say about Mike Trout saying that Mike Trout wants to stay loyal and win a championship with the Angels, and that's why he's staying. I don't believe him. I believe he said that, doggy, because have you been to Anaheim? It's yeah. beautiful. I mean, the stadium is beautiful. The city is beautiful. Eight straight losing seasons, and you want to stay there? Oh, by the way, doggy, he's only played in one single playoff series in 13 years. They're the only one of 30 teams without a single win in a playoff game since 2011. Of all the teams in Major League Baseball, they're the only ones that ain't won. And that's where you want to stay? That ain't about no damn team. That's about that weather. So I guess my question to you guys, what do you think Mike Trout should do? Should he request a trade because the Angels have really let him down? Or do you kind of applaud him for staying loyal and trying to honor that contract? And last but not least, you guys wanted me to bring back MLB Pickles. So you have to try and guess the player within nine. I'm going to go Otani just because I love Shohei Otani. So we have Shohei Otani. Why did it just move? What is going on? I don't know what just happened. We went full screen and we fixed it. So it's a Dodgers player that throws... Right. What about uh, Chris Taylor? I'm either thinking him or Teoscar Hernandez. I'm going to go Teoscar Hernandez. No way. <laughs> Let's go. Only two tries. I've never done it that fast in my life. Well, that does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. And a reminder, guys, we do these almost every single day. So stick around, hit that subscribe button, join the team. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.